For a while, I've been using this command line text user interface application called Neomut for processing my email. Now, I wasn't using this exclusively. I'd obviously use Apple Mail for stuff that sort of needed a bit more uh, system integration, like dealing with attachments and HTML previews and things like this. But it was fascinating in that it showed me how powerful a keyboard focused workflow can be when you're dealing with email and how much things like Apple Mail are really missing the mark for that kind of a power level workflow for processing email. So Neomut would show me loads of emails on the screen at once and I could very quickly just move the selection down, processing those emails quickly in a batch operation. So that the idea being that you just quickly mark them for deletion uh, with a keyboard shortcut and progress on to the next one, or mark them for a batch operation where you can quickly just move a bunch of emails into an action folder later. And this is my approach to dealing with inboxes and, and getting to inbox zero very quickly, either just by quickly replying to a message and deleting that message or moving it into an action folder and extracting a task from that email and moving that into a proper time management system. Uh, like the ones from the sadly late Mark Ford um, whose work I'm an enormous fan of. I've done videos on these time management systems that he came up with uh, over his life. And he just sort of devoted his life to this and came up with an incredible community around all of these time management systems and his understanding of how the mind works in terms of dealing with tasks. It is just absolutely amazing when you read his books on the topics as well. So uh, that was, that's kind of how I deal with uh, converting an email into a task. So all of that showed me really just how powerful these kind of fast keyboard workflows can be with email. But Nehemiah itself is obviously extremely complicated to set up and fairly limited uh, by modern standards in terms of that system level integration with uh, rich content and attachments and HTML and so on. So after these recent experiments of mine where I've been vibe coding these network ready applications that run on a machine on my network and then I can access them on any of my machines either in the house or even away from my own network, um, I thought actually I could turn my attention to this email process and kind of recreate what Neomut was doing but using this new Python web based interface approach that I've been using. And I could even use the same backend libraries that Neomut was using, which is mainly this thing called MB Sync, which is the thing that synchronizes your local folder with your remote IMAP uh, server folder. And then this thing called Not Much, which is an incredibly fast, powerful um, search tool for searching and indexing your emails. So I set out to do that with Claude Code and it, it absolutely nailed it and you know, it gave me a sort of first UI that I didn't really like and I thought actually I wonder how, how quickly I can just make it look a bit like Neomut as well. So I just basically told Claude what color scheme I was using and that I wanted it to look a bit like a text user interface style thing and it just blasted through and just came up with this really nice interface and then obviously there was a fair bit of back and forth and tuning to make it work the way I wanted in particular with all of the keyboard shortcuts and, and everything in place there. And then the real icing on the cake with this is the approach that I wanted to put into place in terms of composing emails. So obviously I'm a massive fan of NeoVim and writing normal text in NeoVim is just as good as it is working with code. This ability to edit text as well as just write text all from the keyboard is where NeoVim really comes into its own. You should definitely check out the no boilerplate video where Tris looks at writing text um, and editing text at the speed of thought uh, with a Vim style navigation system. So um, it, it, is an, it is a great way of writing an email and I absolutely love doing this. So I wanted to be able to do that. And I was thinking, scratching my head, how I would implement this in the web-based UI. And then I had this idea very simply to make the back end use a, a TMUX session that I could also be in the same TMUX session in a real command line window. And then we could both write to the same file. So the, the server, the back end server for the application would open a blank file when I start a reply or a compose from my web-based interface. That would then open obviously in the TMUX window that I have open in my command line window. I can then type in there, use using real NeoVim, save the file, and then the, the backend server would recognize that save to the file and display it through a markdown processor and display the HTML preview in the web-based interface um, for the application. And this just works so well. I'm super pleased with this approach. So in addition to the not much database, which is sort of just purely for uh, searching these emails really quickly, I actually have the system index these emails themselves as well so that my interface can display everything super quickly. So there's a, a database that's stored using the SQL Lite database. There's been some debate on how to pronounce that. If someone can confirm the correct way of pronouncing that in the comments, please do. So every time you do the synchronization, it will sort of update its index of the emails that it has synchronized through MB Sync. Um, so there's always this up-to-date index on the system and it just allows this very fast interface uh, to display these emails. So I have these kind of helper functions that run asynchronously as you're using the application to do things like track the replied status as well. So it'll look for outbound emails in the sent folder that match uh, inbox emails and show the replied flag and these kinds of little extra things that you sort of take for granted in normal email applications I've got in place in this as well. 
By the way, this tool is available for master level members of this channel. Uh, you know, absolutely just use it as a starting point for your own work and put it into Claude code or whatever and, and take it to where you, wherever you want to go with it uh, or just use it as inspiration or whatever. Or, you know, have a look, understand the code and feel free to use it. But it's there as a perk for master level members on this channel. So your support is hugely appreciated. So for me, with the red status, I wanted to make sure this is, you know, as always for me, this is not um, a serious part of this workflow. I didn't ever want to be in a position where I was relying on a red status for any kind of uh, different behavior that I needed to take on an email. So I kind of just ignore the red status. For me, really, the existence of an email in the inbox means that I haven't processed it. It's not been replied to, it's not been deleted, and it's not been moved to my action folder, which means I haven't extracted any kind of to-do out of that email. So the, the inbox is really the actionable state of my emails, and I, I kind of use the red status as a very superficial level to see if I've perhaps seen that email before or not. Uh, but really, I don't want to put too much weight on that. The main goal being to move it out of the inbox and get back to inbox zero. So this highlighting approach that Neomat had where you would action with a keyboard, you know, either you'd mark an email for deletion or you'd you'd mark it for a batch operation very quickly from the keyboard and it automatically advanced to the next highlighted uh, email. And you could quickly go through this list very, very fast. I wanted to recreate that in my version. So I have the X keyboard shortcut set up to mark these emails for deletion. It's just instant and it moves on to the next one. You can quickly just go through at a glance reading those subjects. Uh, and I've got the side by side pane to actually see those as well. Uh, but you can basically make this decision from reading the subject alone in so many cases. So you can just keep your eyes on that area, go down, quickly mark all those for deletion. And then I have my action keyboard shortcut, which marks it for this action that I have of moving it into my action folder. So in all my inboxes, I have this action folder set up, which is this custom approach that I've kind of worked with. Um, and in Apple Mail, you'd actually have to click this one button every time for every email to do this, which is just an incredibly tedious process. With, with this, I can just blast through them, hitting the keyboard shortcut and, and it marks them and you can see the color change and that's it. And then when I do the sync at the end of this process, it will do all of this and delete and move and then resynchronize with the server. That was the other interesting part of this. I have no interest in an email application that's constantly synchronizing and pinging when new emails come in. I want to be in charge of when I do the sync. So I have deliberately omitted any kind of automatic syncing from this. But of course, you could very easily set it up to do that uh, if you did want it behaving that way. Now, of course, the other advantage of doing it in this approach of, of making it a web-based user interface is that it has, of course, no problem displaying HTML email. So unlike Neomat, where you have to open the attachment in your web browser to view uh, an HTML email, I can actually just switch between plain text and email using my P keyboard shortcut in the preview uh, viewer in the application here. So obviously, a lot of email is HTML based, so it's very logical that we just use a web browser to work with this. So it really goes back to this Unix idea of the right tool for the job and you know doing one thing and doing it well, displaying email here is the right tool. You know, web browser is perfect for a web-based application, but obviously also perfect for displaying HTML content. So we're using the right tool for the job here. And then I'm using NeoVim for composing, which again is the right tool for the job. And I have this seamless connection between my real NeoVim window and the web-based interface that deals with the actual sending of the email and the backend API that makes it all work. There's just a really nice representation of this new way that I'm thinking about making personal software tools here, uh, which I've now done with my photo library application to replace Apple Photos, which brings amazing power back to my photo photo library in a way that Apple Photos just never seem to come up with, including sort of pro level culling workflows and raw processing and video color grading. Uh, again, this tool is available for master level members on this channel as well. And I've also made this music streaming MP3 player, which kind of works all in the same way, you know, web based interface uh, over the network. It brings my old MP3 collection back from the dead and, and helps me avoid having a subscription all the time as well. And then I've made these little smaller funky ones like this sort of voice assistant that looks at my Zettelkasten notes vault. I can then speak into it from any of my devices and get a text response and after it searches all of my Zettelkasten notes for the answer. So actually sort of, sort of almost replacing Siri in my mind, you know, this kind of pushback on the Apple ecosystem ecosystem by making my own tools. This is a personal assistant that is genuinely useful using my own real notes data. So that's been um, fascinating as well. And then other little things like my voice server, which lets me speak into any TMUX session I have on my Mac um, from any device on my network. Again, a little bit of fun there. And then the multi-criteria decision analysis tool is another tool available to members of this channel, um, which is an amazing way of visualizing complex choices using these radar charts. Again, fantastic little tool that works over the network using the same kind of approach. 
And then I have my old SMS helpers, which was actually one of the first projects I did where I wanted to set up some um, fancy SMS interaction that I could text into from my dumb phone when I was doing my 2G phone experiment. I've now switched back to an iPhone 2016 SE, so I don't really use that anymore, but that was a fun project. So the way that I deal with attachments here, because I'm obviously composing in NeoVim, there's no real support for uh, attachments in that process. So I'm writing the text element of my email in the NeoVim window. I wanna be able to easily add attachments in the same way that I would with Apple Photos, just dragging and dropping an image into the email. So I do that by dragging and dropping the image onto the web-based interface, which of course accepts that and deals with the upload, and then gives me a little short code in the NeoVim window that I can move around within my text. So I can basically have the exact same workflow, dragging and dropping a file or attachment, and then using the short code in the actual composing markdown viewer to just work around and put text above or below it and so on. So that really rounds off the, the whole system here in terms of this, this way of working with NeoVim for composing and the web-based interface for the rest of it. So hopefully this has kind of uh, given you a few ideas as to what you can easily do with a little bit of vibe coding. And I know there's this pushback on the vibe coding scene and you know, get these comments about the unsustainability of it. And I, I hear all that, you know, I know there are issues with energy use and I know there are issues with water use from these huge data centers. Um, but I think, you know, I'm an, I'm an optimist. If this does prove to be an ongoing issue, I think we can adapt to this. There are all kinds of alternative approaches. You know, I've been experimenting with running local models. I've now upgraded to an M4 Pro Mac Mini, which is capable of running 14 billion parameter models locally. Um, so I've been experimenting using the Gwen model on there with the Gwen code app, and that just runs locally, both that command line app and the model through Alama it's pretty wild what you can do with that. So it's obviously not as powerful as Claude code now, but it's just pretty representative of this ongoing thing that we might be able to see this and the efficiency of these modern small computers that can run models like this locally. So I think there is a more optimistic take on this that shows that we have this bright future for AI coding that doesn't rely on huge uh, external data centers, cloud data centers that are burning through our energy and, and evaporating our drinking water. So I'm still optimistic for the future of this. I think it is just amazing to see what is happening right now. And of course, I think it's just going to keep improving as well. And what I'm hoping to demonstrate with these videos is just how empowering it is for individual users in terms of feeling like we can break free from this big tech grip that we, we, you know, we, we don't have to accept the bits of software that they throw at us anymore. We don't have to buy into their cloud subscription. We can make our own tools and, and use personal computers in a much sort of more personal way than ever before. And this has just been a fascinating journey. So if you want to see more details on the photo library tool that I vibe coded, check out the video on the screen now and I'll see you there.